Oh, ho, ho, ho. holy fuck. <laughs> holy shit. Fuck, I'm crying. Oh my god, that was a lot worse than I thought. Hello smellers and welcome back. So today is a different video than usual. This is more personal. I just wanted to do this because I fucking felt like it, all right? 2022 has been one of the best years for music in a long, long time. Since like 2018, since like 2016. The amount of fucking albums that were released is insane. And the amount of quality that released, insane. I mean, this year alone, I listened to 243 albums and EPs. That's insane. What the fuck? 243? What the f What? What? So whittling it down to the top 20 was fucking hard. You have no idea. Um, but I managed to do it. But I thought, hey, is it really an Aaron is trying video if I'm not torturing myself? So that's where this baby comes in. <laughs> I will be taking shots of this after every album. Well, not every album, because if I took 20 shots of hot sauce, I'd probably die. So I'd probably limit myself to like five or six, right? So yeah, even if you don't like albums, stick around because I'm going to torture myself. That makes you a masochist, I think, you fucking sicko. Before we start... Why don't we have one? Bottoms up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, holy fuck. <sighs> holy shit. Fuck, man. Fuck, I'm crying. Lucky I've got milk on somewhere. Oh my god, that was a lot worse than I thought. Oh, fucking hell. All right. <sighs> fuck. Okay, I'm crying. Holy shit. I think I put way too much. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh. I'm looking over there because my laptop's over there. But a 20 is Little Sims with no thank you. It's just so lyrical and the storytelling on this album is fantastic. I, I'm not taking that many shots of that. Fuck, that fucked me up. At number 19, we have Soul Glow with Diaspora Problems. Now this is a punk album and this is good fucking punk. There's a track I love on here called Dripponomics, which is about like even poor people are trying to stunt in like fancy designer clothes. And it's like, why? Because society told us to. I think it's the punk album of the year personally. At number 18, we have Jakey with Romcom. Now, Jakey is a YouTuber like me. He released music here and there, and I was interested in it, but it never really caught me until he dropped this project. There's some really good tracks on it. Very short, seven tracks, but it's great. At number 17, we have The Weeknd with Dawn FM. But Dawn FM is like him leaning into more of the 80s synthwave stuff, and I love it. A lot of the tracks are really catchy and have this slick feel to them. And I love the whole theming of the album. Where it's like a radio station at the end of the world, you know, and you got Jim Carrey narrating it. What a great album! At number 16, we have Dommy and JD Beck with Not Tight. They've made some of the best jazz soul like tracks I've heard in a long time. You got features from like Mac DeMarco, Anderson Pack, Herbie Hancock, like legends. It's such a good album and it's really overlooked. I recommend it if you like jazz. At number 15, we have Red Veil with Learn to Swim. He is 18 years old. And he's wrapped everything on here. He's produced everything on it. And he made this album pretty much by himself. Insanity. He's fucking younger than me. And he's made one of the fucking best albums of 2022. That's some serious skill, man. I love it. Very good rap album. All right, now for shot number two. I'm going to make this one smaller because fuck you. Oh, God, it's getting in my nose. All right, fuck you. All right. Why did I do this? All right, fuck it. Ooh, that was a lot better than the first one. Ooh, oh boy. That was better than the first one, but still wasn't great. Ooh, ah. I'm sorry if I'm sweating and shit, man. I'm brown, yet I can't handle hot sauce. What is this? Tabasco is also rank, so peppery. At 14, we've got Black Midi with Hellfire, a solid post-punk album. I thought their last album was better last year, but this album is very cinematic in scope, and it's very great. Last year, I think, was a much better year for post-punk, but this year, still had some bangers, and Hellfire was one of them. At number 13, we have Death Dynamic Shroud with Dark Life. This album is like perfect in the way it juxtaposes heavy bangers like Judgment Bolt and then these more lush, instrumental, beautiful moments. I recommend them if you want to kind of jump into Vaporwave. At number 12, we have Metro with Heroes and Villains. Most people know this from the Homelander sample, but this album's great. It's got so many killer features, so many killer tracks. Just been in constant replay, honestly. Feel the Fire with Rocky is my personal favourite. But you've got tracks like Walk em Down, Niagara Falls, Creepin', obviously, with The Weeknd. Don't Tell Over kills it, The Weeknd kills it, Travis kills it. Uh, <laughs> Travis kills it. Everyone brings the A-game and I love it. At number 11, you have Black Country New Road with Ants From Up There. I love Black Country New Road. Their last album was my second favourite album of last year. But this album is a lot more 
grand in scale, like a lot more. A lot of the tracks are more sprawling and dense. You have nine minute tracks, you have 11 minute tracks, but it doesn't feel like it's wasting your time, you know. It's the build ups are beautiful. Like the more concise moments, like on Concord or Hall Down theme, are great too. If you want some beautiful music that really builds and crescendos, I recommend it. At number 10, we have Breakance with Hypochondriac. Breakance's style is very glitchy, it's like hyper poppy in a sense. The way he manipulates his vocals and the instrumentals is otherworldly in a sense, but he manages to pull out of it some beautiful moments and just the choruses and the hooks he comes up with are so damn catchy and you'll just be bopping your head to it. I'm kind of sad it didn't go higher, but hey, that's how good this year's been. Another shot before we get into the next one. Oh my god. Bottoms up again. I'm getting better, I'm getting better. I'm also putting a lot less. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ham on the next two shots, don't worry. At number nine, we have Brockhampton with The Family slash TM. These albums, they drop back to back. And if you know me, you know I fucking adore Brockhampton. And these were their send-off albums. And The Family was like a Kevin Abstract solo album. And The TM was like a bit of a surprise. It was a group album, which sounds more like Leftovers. But hey, I don't mind more Brockhampton. I'm not complaining. I still had a fun time and I love Brockhampton. I got a BB, you know, I got a Brockhampton bias, all right? At number eight is Jid with the Forever Story. Jid is an incredible one of a kind rapper. I've been following him since 2018 when he dropped DiCaprio 2. And this album is a sequel to his 2017's The Never Story. This album feels more than just music, you know, it feels like an experience. It feels like art. It doesn't feel like just a rap album. It feels like a celebration of humanity and the black culture and stuff. And I adore it for that. You have some great legends on here like Yasin Bey and Lil Wayne. Yeah, there's bangers like Dance Now and Surround Sound. And Jid's technical rapping, oh my god, it's incredible. What he says on this album is so layered with double entendres, triple entendres, and his flow is so incredible. And the beat switch ups in some of these tracks are great, and he sings on here. It's a really great album. And number seven is Wise Blood with And in the Darkness, Hearts of God. I've been saying beautiful a lot of here, but this album and Wise Blood is just so beautiful in this otherworldly sense. Her voice is so angelic, oh my god. And the instrumentals she sings over complement her perfect with these strings and piano sections and you really feel like you're in another world when you're listening to them. It's solid, it's incredible. If you want something really beautiful and otherworldly, Wise Blood is your go-to. Now at number six we have Charlie XCX with Crash. I love Charlie so fucking much, it's insane. I think Charlie is one of the best pop artists right now. She made some great hyperpop albums with her self-titled and How I'm Feeling Now. And Crash is her kind of return to pop and it's so good. The ba There's so many bangers on here like Yuck, Lightning, New Shapes, Baby. So many bangers, man. And just listening to it will put you in a good mood. It'll make you happy. It'll make you love life and love love. Because it feels like just a celebration of love, you know? At number five, we have Denzel Curry with Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. Denzel Curry is one of my all-time favorite rappers, man. He's nothing but consistent, you know. This time he's getting more introspective. He's looking in himself, looking within, looking at his past. You have bangers on here like Zatoichi and X-Wing. Then you have introspective tracks like Walk In and Melt Session 1, which are great fucking tracks. If I were to recommend a version of this album to listen to, I'd say the deluxe version. I'd say the deluxe version. I'm hiccuping. Holy shit. I'd say the deluxe version because that has soul versions of the original songs and it's great. Now it's shot time. Fuck. Two more shots. Two more shots. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. For the content. For the content. I'm starting to weirdly like the taste of it. It's like some Schadenfreude shit. Oh my god. It's making my fucking nose run there. Holy shit. Alright, at number four, we have Big Thief, Dragon Newell, Mountain, I Believe in You. So this is a folk album and it is gorgeous. It is stunningly beautiful. It's 20 tracks and you think, holy shit, 20 tracks? This must be bloated. Nope. Every track on here is beautiful and catchy and melodic and it makes you just appreciate the beauty of life and nature and stuff. The tracks are so catchy. You've got Time Escaping, Little Things, Simulation Swarm, Certainty. Such a solid fucking masterpiece. Don't know what they did, but I fucking love it. At number three, you have my favorite rap album of the year, Danger Mouse and Black Thought with Cheat Codes. This is your favorite album over Jid, over Denzel? Yes. Black Thought's a legend, we know. He's in The Roots. Now he plays for Jimmy Fallon, which is 
bit of a fall from grace, but hey. And Danger Mouse is a legendary producer, collabing with Doom and Gorillaz. Going into it, I thought this would be good. I was blown away. The production on every track is so fucking great. Like, Black Thought's rapping over these beats is just incredible. He fits so well in these pockets and his flows are so good. And obviously, what he's saying lyrically is just another level. It's so good. It's so complex and detailed and you, you gotta love it. And the features on here, incredible. You have MF Doom, Joy Badass, you have Run The Jewels, you have so many killer fucking features. If you want some solid lyrical conscious rap with some great beats, check this out. At number two is Alex G with God Save The Animals. Now I fucking adore Alex G. When it came out, I listened to it, I thought this was good. But some tracks were weird, some tracks didn't grow on me. Until the past month, and I got hyper obsessed with this album. Every track on here is so great. It tells such a personal story about him growing up, kind of. Dealings with drugs, I guess, and like how he's kind of turned to faith. But it's not a religious album, not in the slightest. And the way he manipulates his vocals on some of these tracks, it's so weird at first and off-putting, but you learn to fucking love it. And you go, oh my god, this is so sick. This is way better than if you just sang normally, you know? The production is so grand and so much better. And the hooks are just so much catchier. And I don't know, he was just in his bag. This is like his best album, I'd say. Before we get to number one, I'm going to do honorable mentions and rap honorable mentions. I'm going to speed fucking run these because I have a lot of them. And then I'll take a shot. So for rap honorable mentions, we have Lupe Fiasco with Drill Music and Zion. Kendrick Lamar with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I know that didn't make it. Naz with King's Disease 3. Pusha T with It's Almost Try. Freddie Gibbs with Sold Sold Separately. Joey Badass with 2000. Sabo with Few Good Things. Benny the Butcher with Tanner Talk 4. Conway with God Don't Make Mistakes. West Side Gone with 10. L Sweatshirt with Sick, Loyal Kano with Hugo, Baby Tron with Bin Rupi 3, and Nigo with I Know Nigo. Oh, that was just the rap albums. This year was insane for rap. Holy fuck, it was insane for rap. So for honorable mentions, we have Wet Leg with Wet Leg, Joji with Smithereens, Beach House, Once Twice Melody, Matt Watson with See You There, Jockstrap with I Love You, Jennifer B, Viagra Boys with Kayvon, Fontaine's DC with Skinty Fear, Ethel Kane with Preacher's Daughter, Carly Rae Jepsen with The Loneliest Time, Beyonce with Renaissance, Rosalia with Moto Mommy, 070 Shake with You Can't Kill Me, and Rina Sawayama with Hold the Girl. Holy shit! I didn't even say like Steve Lacey or Brent Fires. There's so many good albums, man. It's insane. But I put way too much, but fuck it. I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. We're getting good. We're getting good. I don't need the milk. I don't need the milk. We're good. At number one is. Quadeca with I Didn't Mean to Haunt You. You must be thinking Quadeca? Quadeca? Ain't he that KSI diss track guy? Yes, a couple years ago he put out a diss track against KSI. And he used to be this like a YouTube rapper. <sighs> oh, fucking hell, that was mighty belt. That was like a 7 out of 10. But his last album really intrigued me. It was good from me to you. And it had some great songs on there. But the album wasn't that good for me. He has potential. So I was excited for this album. Then I heard the single Born Yesterday. And that blew my fucking mind. We gotta start by talking that it's a concept record. It's a concept record about Quadeca dying and haunting his family members and loved ones. It's a very serious topic and it is dealt very seriously on it. This is not a happy album. This is quite a sad album. But it's so damn beautiful and melancholic. It feels like a warm hug, especially when you're going through it, you know? Every track on it is stunning. You have Fantasy World. You have Fractions of Infinity. Then you have Bangers. Which I didn't expect. You have bangers like Knots and House Settling with Danny Brown. Danny Brown's this album? And he fucking kills it. I love Danny Brown, man. And he raps from the perspective of a carbon monoxide alarm. It's crazy. This album is one of a kind. It is wholly unique. It has a concept and it fucking delivers. It smashes that concept out the window. I think it is the best album of the year, hands down. And it's a 10 out of 10. I rarely give 10 out of 10s, but it is a straight 10 out of 10. Let's take one more shot for the road. I finished like half the bottle, holy shit. Fuck with Becca. You know, I'm alright. No, I'm not. That was the albums of the year. Thank you for watching. This is a long one, I'm sorry. I'm just very passionate about music, you know? But yeah, I'll see you next week. With something hopefully less painful. Peace.